Good evening, family, Bible Way Church family. It's good to have you again joining in with our Wednesday night Bible study. We hope and pray that you've been having a, a good day and a good week in the Lord. We pray that all is going well at your house, that uh, all the family members are well, and everybody is healthy and, and uh, you're still in our prayers and, and I tell you by the way you are really 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 missed you are really missed I can't wait for us to get back together again where we can uh, uh, see each other in person I, I'm enjoying I'm enjoying and I thank God for this modern technology. I thank God that we're still able to get the word out. But uh, I miss you. It's nothing like uh, being in your presence. And uh, uh, I just look forward to the day when we can come back to the church house and worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. But until that time, Come, or we'll keep coming to you every week uh, using this modern technology here. And uh, so we thank God for it. We thank God uh, uh, for our uh, uh, online Sunday service. I'm, I'm really enjoying the online Sunday service. I'm enjoying all your comments and uh, continue to keep... Uh, encouraging me and the church uh, uh, with your comments. Your comments are indeed important. Matter of fact, that's one of the ways that we know that uh, we are still making a difference in your life and we certainly want to make a difference in, uh, in your life. Uh, and make sure you continue to keep tell, telling your friends. Tell your friends about uh, us, what we are trying to do, uh, yeah, tell them to follow us on uh, YouTube, Facebook. Uh, you know, actually, this has been a blessing in disguise. This has really been a blessing in disguise um, because we had talked about uh, uh, preaching on YouTube and Facebook uh, for many months, even years. And uh, uh, when this situation came up, it forced us into action. And uh, I do want to applaud uh, uh, the AV uh, team, and particularly uh, my son, uh, uh, Tim. I certainly thank the Lord for him. And, and he's uh, just a Johnny on the spot. He's able to, uh, I can share a vision what I would like to do and he's able to to make it happen and so I thank God for uh, Tim on that let's see uh, can we go ahead and uh, get uh, started I think we are just about ready to get started so um, but continue to be your brother's keeper uh, keep checking keep making phone calls uh, Keep working hard. Uh, keep praying for your church. Uh, make sure that you uh, stay involved with your Sunday school class. Uh, I'm, I'm really uh, proud of all of our Sunday school class. Their attendance is looking really, really good there. And so I just thank God. I just thank God in spite of everything that has happened. God has taken uh, uh, these lemons and uh, turned them into lemonade. And so I just thank God. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. I think that uh, we're about ready now to uh, get started this evening with our Bible study time. Uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer as we uh, seek God's grace on our lesson tonight. Our Heavenly Father, we do thank you and we do praise you for who you are, the God who hears 
and you still answer prayers. Speak to our hearts tonight in a mighty way. Lead, guide, and direct us in all that we say and do so that honor and glory can be ascribed to your holy and righteous name. This we ask in Jesus' name and for his sake we do pray. Amen. All right. On last week, we looked at uh, Psalms 91. We looked at Psalms 91. Uh, and uh, we looked at the last eight verses of Psalm 91. And uh, uh, that was our homework. We wanted you to memorize that. So we're going to give you another week to memorize uh, the whole psalm. So we put the whole psalms together. And uh, uh, and then use that psalm. I want you to apply that psalm. Keep praying Psalm 91 over our church, over your family, and over uh, our country, uh, America, because uh, we certainly need uh, God's protection because the coronavirus is still... Uh, roaming across the land uh, and we discovered that that was like a pestilence that is a pestilence and so God he can stop a pestilence and so uh, continue to keep praying Psalm 91 over your family and uh, uh, use that psalm as a weapon against the enemy all right, uh, but today I want to continue to keep looking at the Psalms. And today I want to look at Psalms 121. I want to look at Psalms 121. And uh, I want us to uh, look at some of these Psalms because I want you to be able to memorize these Psalms and I want you to be able to apply these psalms in your everyday life. Now this psalm here, Psalm 121, is what is called a traveler's psalm. It's a traveler's psalm. Or uh, theologically, it's called a song of a sin. A song of a sin. As a matter of fact, you will see that in your heading. You'll see that in your head and in your subscription right there before you get to verse 1. It says, now in, in my Bible, it says a song of degrees, a song of degrees, also a song of ascent. And, and we're talking about ascending. We're talking about uh, going up to Jerusalem. Uh, Psalms 121 is... In a group of psalms, it is one of 15 psalms that basically talks about the traveler. Uh, these was traveler songs, song of ascent as the people was coming back home. They was on their way uh, to Jerusalem. And the thing about Jerusalem, Jerusalem is a city that sat upon a hill. So whether you came from the north, the south, the east, or the west, you had to go up. It was going up the mountain. And uh, this psalm here, uh, we don't know exactly who wrote this psalm. But, uh, out of these 15 psalms, from Psalms 120 to Psalm 134, those are the 15 psalms. Psalms 120 to Psalms 134. And uh, out of those Psalms, uh, King David, he wrote uh, Psalms 122. Then he wrote Psalm 124. Psalm 131. And Psalms 133. In Psalm 133. And so uh, uh, David wrote, we know for sure, he may have wrote more, but we know for sure he wrote four of those Psalms. From And then King Solomon wrote uh, Psalm 127. 
King Solomon wrote Psalm 127. And so we get that information right there in the subscription. Look, look at uh, Psalms 122 and you'll see right there at the subscription a song of degrees or a song of ascent of David. Same thing in Psalm 124. Look at that subscription. It says a song of degrees of David. And so uh, we don't know who wrote these other 10 of these traveler psalms, but uh, some say David, but we, we can't be for sure. Even our psalm today, Psalm 121. Now Psalm 121, you've, if you've been in church for any period of time, you have just about heard your preacher or somebody in them quote Psalm 121. So I'll read it and then uh, I'll break it down. I'll just give you an outline today of this particular psalm. Uh, it says, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence come my help. My help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth. He would not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smit thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and coming in from this time forth, even from evermore. And so that's Psalms 121. Now notice, uh, I have broken up this psalm. Now if you want to take notes, you can. And uh, I'll just give you the outline. Because I want to uh, uh, look at four things here in this as we break up this psalm into four parts. First of all, you see the traveler's help. You see the traveler's help in verses 1 and 2. You see the traveler's help. He says, I will lift up mine eyes into the hills from whence come my help. And actually, he's asking a uh, question there. He's asking a question. From whence come my help? Where, where do my help come from? And then he answers it in verse 2. He says, My help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth. Now, he asks the question, From whence cometh my help? Uh, do the help come from the hills? Do the help come from the mountains? Most people... Uh, when you're traveling, as you get close to home, you start thinking, if something happened to me now, then I'm close enough to get some help from home. I know like a lot of time when I'm coming from out of town, from Houston or something, uh, coming from Mississippi, as I start coming into Dallas, I can see Dallas skyline. I can see the skyline of Dallas. Oh, I'd be so happy when I see the skyline of Dallas. Because I say, if I break down now, if I have a flat or if the car, you know, I run out of gas or, or something happen now, I can call uh, somebody. I can call, you know, one of the church members, call one of my friends, call one of my pastor friends. I can, I can call on my son. I can call on somebody uh, that stays in the vicinity that, of Dallas that can give me some help, that could help me. And so, uh, uh, but that's not how this psalmist is thinking. He's not thinking like that. He's getting close to Jerusalem and he says, I lift my eyes to the hills. I can see the hills. Where do my help come from? Because a lot of times 
right before you got to, there to the city, there in Jerusalem, coming to Jerusalem, coming through those hills, and and a lot of times you, you had to go uh, around uh, curves and bushes and stuff, and, and you had robbers and you had bandits that would rob you, that would uh, 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 steal from you. Remember the man that was like on the Jericho Road and the, the robbers, they, uh, this man got robbed on the Jericho Road. And so uh, uh, a lot of times people start thinking about they can get some help. But this psalmist is not thinking. Like I say, he's not thinking about getting help from the hills. In other words, getting help from my family members. Uh, he's not even thinking about getting help from the government. Uh, there in Jerusalem was the seat of the government. That was the capital of Israel. The capital of Israel was there in Jerusalem. He's not thinking about getting help from the government. Listen, listen. As we're going through this coronavirus today, one of the reasons I wanted us to study Psalm 121 is because every evening people are turning on their television and we're getting an update from the government. We're getting an update from President Trump and his advisors. He'll have this doctor to come on and, and then he'll get the a surgeon general to come on and he'll get the, another person from the government to come on and people today believe it or not they are looking to the government they're looking uh, to the the hills the mountains of the government to come and help us but that's not how this psalmist is thinking he's looking beyond the hills and that's what we need to do ladies and gentlemen we need to look beyond the hills. Uh, look, look here at Jeremiah. Turn with me to Jeremiah 3 and 23. Jeremiah 3 and 23. Look at Jeremiah 3 and 23. Jeremiah 3 and, and 23. It says, Truly in vain is salvation hope for from the hills. And from the multitude of mountains, truly in the Lord our God is the salvation of Israel. See, your help don't come from the mountains. It don't come from the government. God can use the government. But your ultimate source of help is the Lord. And that's what this psalmist says in verse number two. My help come from the Lord. And notice, the, he, he lets you know who the Lord is. He's the maker of both heaven and earth. He's the creator, the same God that created uh, light and said, let there be light. That's the God that he's saying that the help is coming from. And so you got to look beyond the hills. you got to look beyond the hills. Uh, look at Isaiah 40 uh, and 12. Isaiah 40 and 12. Are you with me, by the way? Are you with me? Isaiah 40 and 12. Uh, look at the imagery of God here. He says, who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand and melt out heaven with the span and comprehend the dust of the earth in a, a measure and weigh the mountains in scales and the hills in a balance. Notice, God weighed the mountains. This is where your help come from. The God that makes mountains. The God that 
made the heavens, the God that made the earth, the God that made the dust on the earth. That's where your help come from. Your help is not coming so much from Washington. Even though God can use Washington, your help is ultimately coming from the Lord. You know, the Bible says, curses is a man that put his faith in man. See, man will let you down, but God will never let you down. Then that brings me to my second point. The traveler's keeper. The traveler's keeper. Look here at verse number three through verse number five. Now notice, he changes now from first person where he says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills and which come my help. My help come from the Lord. He changed to he. He will suffer thy foot or your foot, your foot. Do you see? He's addressing his audience now. Uh, he will not suffer your foot or thy foot to be moved. He that keep it thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keep it Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy, and that word thy is, you can put you in there. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. And so he's looking at who your keeper is, the traveler's keeper. And again, uh, the, the traveler's keeper is the Lord. Now, watch what he says in verse 3. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. Losing your footing in the Bible was a picture of disaster. Uh, God will guard you in such a way that he will keep you from disaster. That's what he's basically talking about. Uh, remember the psalmist over in Psalm 73, uh, how this was a psalm of Asaph and how Asaph was uh, envious of rich folks that was wicked. The, the, uh, look what he says in Psalm 73 verses 1, 2, and 3. He said, truly God is good to Israel, even to such as are of a clean heart. But as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped. I almost slipped. Why, how was that? For I was envious at the foolishness when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. He said, when I saw the prosperity of the wicked, he said, man, I just about slipped. I just about ruined my life. Uh, and, and one of the ways people ruin their life a lot of time is by uh, getting out of church. They'll turn their back on God. They'll start hating on God. Uh, and when you hate on God, then you hating on your help. You hating on your help. Uh, so that's a disastrous move uh, to turn your back on God or quit going to church. As a matter of fact, this psalmist, when uh, uh, he, he talks about in verse number 17, really it wasn't until I went into the sanctuary of God then I understood their end. He said, it wasn't until I really got back in church that I really understood that I really should be praying for those uh, 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 wicked uh, people that are prosperous. I should be praying for them because uh, if they die, uh, they're going to go to hell. And this is the only heaven that they will experience is, is the uh, blessings that they are getting now. This is their heaven. And so... We should really be praying for wicked people and what happened. But uh, uh, the psalmist uh, talks about how when you walk with God, he will not suffer that foot to be moved. 
He won't let you uh, uh, make a disastrous move, lose your footing. And uh, uh, that's because he's your keeper. That's because he's your keeper. He says, he that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel. And so he's your keeper. Look at Psalms 127. Psalm 127, verse 1. He says, except the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain that build it, except the Lord keeps the city, the watchman wake it, but in vain. The Lord has got to be your keeper. The Lord has got to be your keeper. Uh, if the Lord is not your keeper, then you stand up in vain. And so make sure that the Lord is your keeper. And so uh, this psalmist, uh, his trust was in God. Now, uh, remember last week we learned in um, Psalms 91 and 11, I believe it was verse 11, where uh, God talks about, yeah, verse 11, how he says, for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy way. And so God can uh, send angels as you're traveling a long life way. Uh, and so, you know, I believe that we even have a guardian angel. But even if you don't want to believe that we got a guardian angel, we got a guardian God. We've got a guardian God. <laughs> According to this text here, he says, uh, He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber or sleep. Why, the Lord is thy keeper. Psalm 121 focused on the angel's protection. Psalm, I mean, yeah, Psalm 91 focused on the angel's protection. But this psalm here focuses on God's protection. God's protection. And so, even if you don't believe in no guardian angel, believe in a guardian God. Believe that God will protect you. And, and notice, uh, what I like about this psalm, it says, he don't slumber. Uh, that's in verse 3. But then notice verse 4. He says, Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber or nor sleep. He don't, God don't get tired and weary where he have to take a nap or go to sleep. Uh, remember uh, when uh, the prophet Elijah went uh, uh, to the mountain. And he was on the top of the mountain, and he, they had this God contest. And he called uh, Ahab, had his uh, 400 prophets, and, Jer and his wife, uh, Jezebel, had 450 prophets. And uh, he called all those prophets, 850 prophets together, and he said, let's have a God contest. And he said, what I want y'all to do, I want y'all to go ahead and build an altar. And then I want y'all to, don't, don't like the match, but call on your God. And remember, they started calling on their God early in the morning. And then by lunchtime, nothing had never happened. No fight had came down. And so he said, what's wrong? Uh, your God, is he hard of hearing? Or uh, did your God go on a journey somewhere? Uh, and then he was being very facetious with him. He said he must have went to the restroom. Did he, did he have to go to the bathroom? I mean, what, what's going on with your God? And then he said, uh, uh, is he sleeping? Did your God go to sleep on you? Cry loud. Uh, you better shout loud. See, can you wake him up because he done went to sleep? See, we don't have to worry about that with our God. Our God don't get tired, he don't get weak, he don't slumber, he don't sleep. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, uh, Elijah, he went on 
and he called on God and as soon as he called on God, God sent the fire down and uh, uh, burnt up the sacrifice. And so um, God is our keeper, ladies and gentlemen. The traveler's help, we got the traveler's keeper, but then we got the traveler's perseverance. Uh, the preservation, I'm sorry, the traveler's preservation. Uh, how God preserve us. Look here at verse number six and seven. It says, the sun shall uh, not smit thee by day, nor the moon by night. Now, keep in mind, when people was traveling in Israel, you're looking at going across a desert. And in the daytime, it was extremely hot, 110 degrees, 115 degrees, 120 degrees, 118 degrees. It was extremely hot. And a lot of the people, they would die of sunstroke. Remember in uh, Jonah, Jonah 4 and 8. Jonah 4 and 8. Uh, remember Jonah, the reluctant prophet. He didn't want to go and preach there at Nineveh. And uh, the Bible says in Jonah chapter 4, verse number 8, that Jonah, after he had finished preaching, he went out to the city, outside the city, and he built him a little boot. Uh, he was angry with God. He was angry with God. And the Bible says in verse number 8, uh, and it came to pass when the sun did arise that God prepared a vehement east wind and the sun beat upon the head of Jonah that he fainted and wished in himself to die and said it's better for me to die than to live. Uh, that east wind, that, that hot wind was coming in there with the sun. Jonah said, I can't take it. I can't take it. I can't take it. Now, keep in mind, God was uh, chastising uh, Jonah. But uh, even if God don't chastise you, there in Israel, man, trying to go across that... Uh, that desert, it would just be extremely hot. Or, that was in the day. Or, it would get extremely cold at night. Jeremiah 36 and 30 talks about that. Jeremiah 36 and 30. Are you with me, Bible way? Jeremiah 36 and 30 talks about that. It says, therefore, thus said the Lord of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, he shall have none to sit upon his throne of David, and his dead body shall be cast out in the day to the heat, and in the night to the frost. And so it would get cold at night, it's extremely cold where you have a frost going through the desert at night. And it get hot in the day. But when God is your keeper, God can fix it where you can make it through tough time. You can make it through a hot desert in the day. You can make it through a cold desert at night. Regardless what the condition is, God will fix it. As a matter of fact, when you open your Bible, to Exodus chapter 13 and verse number 21. Remember when the children of Israel was uh, coming out of Egypt after they had, uh, right before they got to the Red Sea. The Bible says in 13, chapter 13, Exodus chapter 13, verse number 21. The Bible says, and the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud 
to lead them the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and by night. He took not away the pillar of the cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people. Notice how God was working for the people. So that cloud by day protected them from the rays of the sun, protected them from the sun. The sun couldn't beam down that hot on them in the day. And then at night, God turned the uh, pillar of uh, that cloud into fire by night. And so they had some heat at night in that cold desert. But then they had like a cool air condition like in the day. Look what God done. done. God is a powerful God. So regardless of what we are going through, God will fix it where we can bear. That's why old folks men used to say, God will not put no more on you than you can bear. So we see the traveler's preservation, but then you see the traveler's assurance. That's the fifth thing, the traveler's assurance in verse number 8. The Bible says, uh, the Lord shall preserve thee, 7 and 8, uh, the Lord shall preserve thee from all evil, he shall preserve thy soul, the Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth, even from evermore. And so, uh, this phrase now, uh, the Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in. I used to interpret that verse as when you leaving home, God will be with you going out. When you come back home, God will be with you coming in. Uh, I still believe that, but at the same time, it's a lot bigger than that. It's a lot bigger than that. It's something that I was missing, and I didn't really catch that until I went back and studied this passage again. What this is really dealing with, this is dealing really with uh, going out and coming in is really a lifestyle. It's dealing with a life of uh, where where every, not so much you just leaving your house and going to work and coming back from the work to your house. It's basically a 24 hour coverage, seven days a week, uh, weekdays, weekends. God is with you and it don't matter where you may be. Uh, God is with you. Um, I'm reminded of a story, and, and you can read it when you get home, or you can read it at your uh, time of leisure. In 1 Samuel chapter 29, matter of fact, let me just turn over there, because we are finishing up. 1 Samuel chapter 29, and verse number 6. 1 Samuel 29 Remember, Saul was after David. Saul was after David. And so what David did, David ran into the enemy camp. He ran into the Philistines. And he stayed over there with the Philistines for over a year. And so God protected David over there until they was getting ready. They was getting ready. The Philistines was getting ready to attack Israel. But God didn't want David to attack Israel. Matter of fact, if David would have attacked Israel with the Philistine, then the people probably would not have wanted David to be king because, you know, God can forgive and forget, but people a lot of times, they don't want to forgive and they don't want to forget. And so, but David was, was in a dilemma. When he was with those a, a Philistine for that whole year God protected him now think about it they should have killed David because why? David had killed their champion many years earlier he had killed Goliath but 
uh, God had granted favor with Achish the king. And, uh, uh, but the Philistine soldier says, no, we don't trust David going over here. David may get out there and turn his back on us and start fighting with Saul and fighting against us. And so they say, send David back. But that was God's way of preserving David, keeping David from fighting them. But notice what Achish says about David. I like what this king of the Philistines says about David in verse 6 of 1 Samuel 29. He said, Then Achish called David and said unto him, Surely as the Lord liveth, thou hast been upright and thy going out and thy coming in with me in the host is good in my sight. For I have not found evil in thee since the day of thy coming unto me unto this day. Nevertheless, the Lord uh, favored uh, thee not. All right. And what he's saying, the uh, Philistines, that's what he's talking about. The lords of the Philistines favored thee not. And so, um, but he's letting David know, David, you're coming out and you're coming in. I found you to be a good man, a very good man. And uh, I've been happy to have you on my side. Now, think about where David was at. He was in the enemy camp and God protected him. Listen, I don't care where you go. I don't care where you go. When you got God's favor in your life, God will take care of you. Look, when you stay with God, I say when you stay with God, then God will stay with you. Because see, God is not just a hideout. See, in Psalms 91, we learned that God will be a hideout for you. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. So God is a hideout. He's a, he's a refuge. He's a very present help in time of trouble. He's a hideout for you. But this Psalms let us know that God is not only a hideout, but God is also our bodyguards. So if you need a good bodyguard, then God can be your bodyguard. And the thing I like about God, being your bodyguard, most of the time, only rich people uh, can have a bodyguard. Why is that? Because only rich people can afford a bodyguard. But ladies and gentlemen, we don't have to worry about paying for our bodyguard. You know why? Because the Lord Jesus Christ, he paid the bill a long time ago on Calvary's cross when he shed his blood for your sins and my sin. So ladies and gentlemen, rely on your bodyguard. Last time we talked about your angels, but this time we're talking about God. So lift your eyes to the hills from whence come your help. Your help is coming from the Lord. All right, well, that's it. Let's have a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we do thank you and we do praise you for who you are, the God who hear and can still answer prayers. Lord, I pray for all of these that's watching out in uh, internet land. I pray, dear God, that you will bless them with the blessing they stand in need of, whether it's something physical, uh, financial, spiritual, whatever it is, dear God, uh, bless them with it. Then, Lord, we do pray that you will protect us, dear God, from this coronavirus. Protect us, dear God, from this pestilence. Protect us from all sickness. Protect us from any hurt, harm, and danger. Lord, I pray uh, for those who have lost jobs. I pray, dear God, that uh, uh, they'll get a phone call to come back to work. Uh, Lord, I pray that you'll find them uh, a better job than even than what they had. And so, Lord, 
I just put it in your hands, Lord. Bless your people with the blessings they stand in need of. I pray for every member a Bible way, dear God. Uh, bless every member of Bible way with the blessing they stand in need of. Bless every person that's watching, whether they are a member of Bible way or not. Bless them, dear God. And Lord, we'll be careful, we'll be careful to give you the praise and the glory. For it's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. All right, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, make sure you tune in on Sunday morning, 11 o'clock. Uh, Tell somebody about this link. Tell somebody to watch us on uh, Sunday morning uh, on uh, BibleWay.Online.Church or you can watch us on Facebook. And then homework, memorize Psalm 121. Memorize Psalm 121. Well, God bless you. Have a good night.